I was thinking in the car today as, as we were going to talk a, a little bit about this stuff is I remember over the last 20 years, because I'm an adult now, or kind of kind an of adult, half, yeah, like yeah. I'm a half adult, yeah. I'm part six years old and I'm part yeah. 50, 53, 50. Yeah. but um I had the opportunity as I was training players to watch coaches just to see their demeanor. And, and so many, many, many times the coaches that were coaching triple A level hockey never really played at a triple A level. And most of the time in that situation, they're always the ones that, you know, how's the team? Ah, the guys don't listen. This negative. And they always are the smartest guy in the room. Yeah. No and self-reflection. Yeah. The, the hard ass. The hard ass, and I and and the kids see through the hard ass because is there anything in your life that reveals you you were a hard ass on yourself? Do you know what I mean? No. What do you mean? Like as a coach, so I I, I don't want to say a name, but okay, there was one guy that was coaching the team, and he was always like barking at guys, and nothing was ever good enough, and blah 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 blah. But he hasn't done anything. He has a normal job. Oh yeah. Where he shows up, punches in. He's fat and out of shape. He doesn't take care of himself and he's a, always the smartest guy in the room. But like the kids look at you and go, who, 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 you're not, like you always say, you're not doing it. That's exactly. You're not, you're not, you're, not, you're talking like you're so, you're so uh, perfect on everything and you execute. So well, where'd you play house league? What? And that's the truth. House league. He played house league. And you're asking, and, and, and that's not the end of the world because that, there's a lot of reasons why someone could play house league and all that stuff. It doesn't make them stupid. It doesn't make them not possible to be a good hockey player. Maybe they weren't dedicated. But if you played house league hockey and you're co- coaching AAA, you have no idea what that level is like. You've never been there, man. So yeah. to have excellence, how the heck can that come across? You didn't yeah. put excellence into your hockey career. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, and it's, and it's the arrogance. That's the that's part it. that bothers that's me. That's what bugs me too. It's, yeah. There's no problem if you haven't played at a certain level and now you're a coach. And right. you want to coach because you like coaching, that's fine. Yeah. But there's a difference between that and the arrogance of thinking you know yeah. just because you're in a position of authority. Yeah. And that's what I find with a lot of minor hockey coaches. And that was me all through AAA. Every yeah. coach I had up until after my draft year. After my draft year. Think yeah. of this. I know. Every single coach I had was either a dad. Or just your your Joe guy that maybe played a little bit of hockey, minor yeah. hockey growing up. Yeah. I didn't have a single coach, not one that played at a high level, except for b- before my draft year, except for one played in the OHL and he was ended up being my worst coach actually in minor hockey. Yeah. But other than that, it was always just like somebody's dad. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. That you can there's coach. There's nothing wrong with There's that. nothing wrong with that. But to come in with the arrogance of thinking you know, I remember my very first hockey coach was probably my best, I would say he was my best coach outside of the coach I had after draft year. And he was just a dad. And he, but he was a, like a motivator and a communicator. Police officer? And, yeah. yeah him. And, and spoke to us. Yeah, good and, guy. And yeah. great Cared guy. about you. F- yeah, fantastic guy. And no X's and O's, he, but he no, was just like, go no play X's hockey and O's, but let's play hard. hockey and learn some lessons about yeah. being a team and whatever. Yeah. When we turned, I think it was either nine or 10. He was like, I, I don't know enough to coach these guys anymore. Perfect. So he stopped coaching. Perfect. But someone exactly like him, but arrogant, became the coach. And that's and then it was just down. And our team was absolute dog shit for, until we were yeah, 15. Remember. And that's exactly why. We had a coach who couldn't teach us anything hockey related and couldn't even teach us concepts of like being a team and playing like a team. Right. Couldn't even teach us that. Right. So we were always so terrible. And... Not for any real good reason. Like we had a, we had decent, when we got older, we had some decent players yeah. enough to be competitive. Mm-hmm. We don't, there's no, no reason we needed to get blown out of the water mm-hmm. every game other than our coaches were terrible leaders. And that's, that's exactly when I think back on it, it's exactly what it was. Exactly. What we just said, Jock, Dad, Jocko Willink in his book, extreme ownership says there's no bad teams. There's only bad leaders. Yeah. It's very true. Well, think about when you coached Charlie's little Essex team. These are double A nine year olds, yeah. Whatever, and you got them playing as a team, moving the puck, doing systems. The little kids caring about it, caring, you know, spending the time. Well, that's the talking. Thing, right? you, 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 like, uh, uh, so I'm, I'm off tangent here, okay. and that's okay. But it's, it's part of the thing. Yeah. Is okay. Let me uh, let me get right back to that. Yeah. Your job, you 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 need to do your best as a coach. I don't care what level you're at to be able to commute with your com- communicate with your players clearly and concisely. Okay, 
that means there has to be a message of some freaking yeah. sort. Substance, yeah. Right? So I knew that they weren't great hockey players at the time. They're nine. They're playing A hockey, which that doesn't mean anything at that point. But I knew that if I was going to take the team, that there had to be some message. Right? So my message to them was clearly, like, I looked at it and I said, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm not just going to sit here. Like, the first practice I did, I went, oh, my God, this is horrible in my head. And I told my assistant coach, but I couldn't have that attitude the rest of the year. So I had to come up with something. So number one, I said, I'm going to make them feel good about themselves, like, like give them a reason to love hockey. I'm going to bring out the best of them as hockey players, and I'm going to teach them the game of hockey as best as I can for that age. That's not the end of the world, is it? That's, that's pretty simple, I think. Yeah, totally. I think so. And that, that was my message to them. I said, I'm going to teach you guys how to pass the puck, how to move your feet. I'm going to teach you a little bit about hockey. Does everybody here want to be a better hockey player and be good at hockey? And they're all like, yeah. I said, okay, you guys just told me that. So that's my job is to do my best to do that for you. They loved it. They learned about hockey for the first time in their life. They weren't just skating around, someone saying, and, and, and I'm not disrespecting the coaches before. They, they didn't know. But they weren't just saying that work harder. Come on, guys, let's go. Keep going. Those aren't coaching cues. Those are just dad could do that from the stands. Yeah. So I would show I showed them, you know, basic skills, and then I showed them how the how the game should evolve and how the flow of the game should be in positionally a little bit like nothing crazy, yeah. but it was like they Probably. loved it. Yeah. How to you know when they could make plays and all that stuff. But I I taught them about you know work ethic. Now they understand what working hard is. Like now if they're going. In a, if they're playing a position and they don't do it hard, now I can coach them, right? But it was always clear and it was always concise. And, and like you said earlier, it's not soft. I was always the first one to say, great job, kid, or you're doing so well. But I was also the, to that same kid, including my own. I'd say, that's not good enough. You, you're you playing hockey or you're doing this because you want to be good. And I always relate it to life. You can't go through life just kind of going through it. There's got to be some sense of purpose and self-pride. And that's what coaching was for me, was to bring the best out of those kids. So, And it was very, very clear. Yep. that I, And then you know what the beautiful thing was? Is they knew that I wasn't doing it just to win hockey games. They knew that I actually wanted them to be the best that they actually could be. I, I, I wanted to squeeze all the juice out of that lemon that I possibly could. And they knew it. They knew it. They knew it. They knew it. It wasn't like it was a rah-rah thing every day. They knew. And, they, and when, when they knew it, they wanted to impress me. They wanted me to say, great job, Luke. Great job, you know, Cam. And, or, or get in a little bit of shit because you know what? People will uh, will do a lot of things to get noticed. And if and if uh, if you're not giving them praise, they're going to find a way to get some attention. And it's going to be through a lot of times just negative. Yeah. You know? Totally. Yeah. When I think the, at the risk of distracting you more from your point yeah. is uh, – you would you were always and this is I, I try to do the same thing with the guys in here is try to provide a purpose for them mm -hmm. like why are they doing what they're doing and yeah. we highlight that all the time being a why guy and I had literally zero of that literally zero of that like none until after draft I know none I know and it was just it's embarrassing because it takes so little mm -hmm. it takes so little. Or even mm -hmm. as as a coach, especially with all the the resources that you have available now, maybe it was a little bit different when I was younger. There wasn't as much information, but how could you be not prepared? I don't to know. some degree, you know, to some degree. Yeah, some even degree. If, like, even if like you're Joe one Dad, one thing that you're trying to get yeah. out of them. Yeah. Even if you're just Joe Dad. Yeah. Like, how could you not be teaching anything? Yeah. 